Located approximately 30 miles away from the nation's capital, Manassas, Virginia was a key strategic point for both Union and Confederate armies in the early part of the Civil War. It is therefore no surprise that the fields on which I now stand were host to two major Civil War battles, each with a very different character. In the first half of 1861, Confederate troops under Joseph E. Johnston held the Manassas area and areas in the Shenandoah Valley. They were trying to protect the railroads here at Manassas. With Abraham Lincoln anxious to score some early military points, he ordered General Erwin McDowell, commanding the Union Army, to move out of Washington and into Northern Virginia against Johnston's army. The two armies clashed here at Manassas on July 21, 1861, the bloodiest battle in American history up till that time. The battle begins well for the Union, with Federal forces crossing Bull Run at Sudley's Ford and sweeping Confederates off of Matthews Hill. Confederate General P.G.T. Beauregard is able to organize a defense on Henry Hill with the help of Generals Francis Bartow, Barnard B., and Thomas Jonathan Jackson, who will earn his nickname Stonewall at this battlefield. The stand on Henry Hill gives the Confederates enough time to bring in reinforcements, troops arriving from the Shenandoah Valley, who then launch a massive counterattack and sweep the Federals from the field, across Bull Run, and back in the direction of the nation's capital. The ferocity of the fighting here at Bull Run demonstrated to both Northerners and Southerners that victory would not be achieved in a single battle. Union and Confederate forces will meet again on these fields 13 months later in August of 1862. Following his dazzling success on the Virginia Peninsula, Robert E. Lee is eager to use his Confederate army to attack the enemy. Namely, Union General John Pope, who he calls the Miscreant Pope, who has been terrorizing Northern Virginia. On August 9, 1862, Stonewall Jackson smacks Pope's troops in the mouth at the Battle of Cedar Mountain, forcing Pope to retreat in the direction of Washington. Pope is hoping to unite his army with McClellan's Army of the Potomac, and Lee desperately wants to stop that reunion from happening. Stonewall Jackson manages to get around Pope's flank and interpose himself between Pope and Washington. He takes a defensive position in an unfinished railroad cut here at Manassas. With Jackson between him and the nation's capital, Pope thinks that he has an opportunity to bag Jackson once and for all. On the night of August 28th, Stonewall Jackson sees Union troops retreating across his front. He rides up to his commanders and tells them, gentlemen, bring out your men, initiating the Second Battle of Manassas. Over the next two days, Pope will launch attack after attack against the unfinished railroad. He will meet some minor successes, but is never able to dislodge Jackson. In the meantime, he has completely neglected the other half of Lee's army under James Longstreet. On August 30th, Longstreet will take advantage of Pope's preoccupation with Jackson and slam into the Union left flank, driving the Federals back in the direction of Washington. Having scored another dazzling victory, Lee now feels confident to take his Confederate army into the North, a campaign that will culminate in the Battle of Antietam. So here at Manassas, we have two battles, two Confederate victories, both of which changed the country's perception of war and had a significant impact on its duration and outcome.